Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. Something I pride myself in doing on this channel is making sure that I cover subject matters in depth, which often requires uploading video after video on exactly the same franchise. Due to its insane level of popularity, a brand such as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has had a ludicrous amount of video games programmed featuring the famous foursome. Thus far, we have already looked at a ridiculous quantity of these, including epic fan-made experiences. In today's content though, we are going to focus on an official release, as I feel I have some unfinished business to take care of. You see, when it comes to the classic era of the Turtles, we have already explored the iconic video games that saw release across home consoles, the arcade, and even handhelds. I've documented the whole era, right? Wrong, as we still need to look at the PC exclusives. The most interesting of the lot, in my personal opinion, is this game, a title we can easily consider the black sheep of the franchise, as it certainly seems to get the least coverage. So during this upload, let us try and discuss why and analyse what exactly this game contains. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Manhattan Missions, the black sheep of the classic Turtles franchise. Or should I say, Black Turtle. Yeah! The Teenage Bloody Mutant Ninja Turtles. How many times in these videos can I get away with talking about how popular this damn series was. Looking at the steady views these videos receive, I could possibly gush about the turtles infinitely, as the hunger for content celebrating this time period seems to never really result in satiation. I guess this is a testament to how beloved the turtles are. In the world of gaming, games like Turtles Arcade and Turtles in Time have a timeless appeal, offering fantastic four-player beat-em-up experiences that can amuse players old and new right up until now. Hell, even the likes of the 1989 NES game gets its fair share of love, despite it having its detractors. In North America, the NES was the most popular console on the continent, so many children would easily be able to play this game, and even over in Europe and Australia, where the NES didn't have much of an install base, the console's fortunes changed a bit when clever marketeers decided to package the underperforming platform with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game leading to the system outselling the Sega Master System in power regions at Christmas that year, for the first time ever. You can easily see why there is so much nostalgia out there for this game. So bringing all of this into account, you can instantly guess why less gamers would have likely experienced Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Manhattan missions, as far less children were DOS gaming on PCs in 1991. Most kids were gaming on consoles, or even playing arcade cabinets generally for that matter. You see, by the time Manhattan missions existed, both Turtles Arcade and Turtles in Time already existed. An art style included in those games continued to lean more and more heavily artistically to be in line with the hugely popular animated series, and rightly so. Manhattan Missions, on the other hand, decided to take a different artistic approach, and instead offered up a game with visuals that were more in line with the Mirage comic book series, the more grown-up source material where the turtles came from in the first place. Which makes a lot of sense really considering that a PC gaming audience was obviously likely to be more mature than a console gaming audience. While all of the well-known Turtles games of the period were developed in Japan by Konami, Manhattan Missions on the other hand was only published by Konami, with the game instead being developed by Distinctive Software, a Canadian development house based out of British Columbia. The group had built up a name for itself in the late 80s by creating decent ports, racing and sports games, including the Test Drive series and stunts. In fact, they had experience working with Konami and the Turtles brand before, porting the original NES Turtles game over to DOS, the Commodore 64 and the Amiga format. So I guess a strong case can be made that Manhattan Missions is the PC sequel to the PC NES port of the game, if that makes sense. As mentioned earlier, distinctive software games would draw heavily from the tone of the original Mirage comics, and even the dash form of theatrical films too. In fact, speaking of the comics, the game's story would be based off of the publication's first ever issue, with the game's title screen pretty much being an exact reproduction of the splash page from page 2 and 3 of issue 1. 
Straight away, I have to comment that the introduction scenes this game brings to the table are wonderfully atmospheric, offering up comic book panel-like visuals accompanied by text boxes to help tell the story. It is pretty much rolled out in the style of a digital comic book, complete with great accompanying music to complement the scene. The early scene ends up telling and showing the entire Splinter and the Turtles comic book origin story before bringing players back to present day. As for the gameplay itself in Manhattan Missions, the title does not play anything at all like any of its console or arcade counterparts, but instead offers up more of a Prince of Persia-like playstyle, a game that was obviously a big hit on the DOS format. The ultimate goal is to complete a number of missions, Manhattan missions if you will, hence the game's accurate titling. These stages are divided into what are known as scenes, with players seeking to defeat Shredder at the end of the game. The game doesn't feature side-scrolling like in the NES or arcade games, but instead the player must traverse from screen to screen. These environments consist of two-dimensional platforming, where players can move freely or take up a fighting stance to indulge in combat. Rather than being programmed to function at its best with a controller or simple button layout like an arcade game, instead Manhattan Missions has been designed to be built around a PC keyboard, where PC gamers can switch between walking or fighting mode as well as arm or withdraw a weapon. Every turtle in the game, like others, come with their trademark weapons which they can use against enemies and each can throw ninja stars if necessary too. The game also includes some basic RPG elements, for example each turtle has a strength, speed and HP stat. These can all be increased as players progress through the game. Speaking of RPG-like mechanics, health can be regained between missions by resting the turtles. These rests cost the player some of the game's 48 hours, that of which must be used up to beat the game and defeat Shredder. In total, there are 16 levels to explore, however they are not all simple left to right platforming, as sometimes the road to victory is a tad more complex. There are ladders, manholes, doorways and an assortment of other access points that allow you to explore this game's stages. Even the level design itself is very comic bookish in nature. It seems that the developers of this game would still take a fair share of inspiration from the 1989 title that they had originally converted for other formats in that the game requires players to be able to balance their foursome and use them as and when appropriately, to avoid any of them from being downed. Once again, the turtles can be rotated in and out at will, and pizza can be used to restore lost health in sticky situations. If a turtle is knocked out, opportunities arise to bring them back, in this instance being rescued by Casey Jones, with this popular character making his first ever video game appearance. At the end of each stage, players must face off against end-level bosses, some of which even are accompanied by cool cutscenes. The game is certainly very different overall to any of the others on the market, even if elements have still been pinched here and there from a 1987 cartoon, such as the Turtles' multicoloured headbands or the depiction of Rocksteady and Bebop. As covered, a lot of the game's art is in line with the Mirage comics such as the Foot Soldiers designs or the heavy inclusion of the Triceratons. Amongst it all, there are elements of the live action films to be found too, such as reporter April O'Neil resembling her actress, Paige Turco, or Shredder featuring the movie's red outfit. There is no doubt about it that this is the most mature Turtles game of the era in terms of look, aesthetics and general gameplay design. But as is always useful when covering these games of old, it's nice to attempt to get as broad a perspective as possible, so let's look at what someone else made of this game. Hardcore Gaming 101 would cover the game, concluding it's certainly the most interesting of all the 90s era TMNT games, with its unique mix of inspirations and design choices and true diversity between the turtles. The locations, graphics and story does make up for a lot of its shortcomings, however, the TMNT fans should find enough enjoyment to keep them going, though for a general player it feels more like a playful experiment rather than a complete experience. To truly signify how little this game seems to have been played recently in comparison to the many other Turtles games, this was the only review I could find online given an opinion on the game. When I called this game the Black Sheep, I am not exaggerating, as all of the other Turtles games from this era have been covered to death. The fact that it was released exclusively for PCs and marketed towards a more mature audience probably has a huge amount to do with this. And if many children did get their hands on this back in the day, they would have likely complained anyway. 
I save this as the main elements I often see criticised with regards to the NES original game was that none of it was in line enough with the cartoon series, and the game was difficult and complicated to play in comparison to its arcade counterparts. Bearing in mind that this game is even more complicated than its predecessor and leans even more heavily into the world of comic books, I think it is probably for the best that most children didn't play this one, as I could see a lot of moaning taking place online today if that had of been the case. If you hate the NES original, one imagines you would hate this game even more. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of the black sheep of the classic Ninja Turtles video game library. If you enjoyed this video, maybe you would like to see some of my previous uploads covering the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise. I have uploaded a cornucopia of videos on this very subject. So if you like stuff like that, if you're new here, make sure you like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, you know all the usual things YouTubers tell you to do. In fact, this channel is partly funded by the generous people who back it over on Patreon. And a new thing I'm doing with you lovely lot is answering a different question um, each and every video from one of you. So today's question is from Ronald Booher. Let me open my phone. And he has asked me, um, he says, My friend wanted to know if you liked Kanye West. He only asked because Kanye was once again go sorry says he only asked because Kanye was once going to release an album called Turbo Graphics 16. Yes, um, I am aware of that hilarious little gaming factoid. And legend says that apparently um, good old Kanye grew up with a Turbo Graphics 16, and his favourite game on the platform was Blazing Lasers. So, if true, um, obviously Kanye West is a man of culture indeed. Um, in regards to whether or not I like him, um, with regards to his music, not much of a music man, I'm more of a gaming man. However, what I have seen of him as a person, he seems absolutely hilarious. And I'm sure um, if we got to know each other in real life, me and good old Kanye, we probably would become very, very close friends. Indeed, like I've seen this man on on Twitter. He's always up to some top level legendary trolling. I think the man is an absolute genius with regards to um, some of the amazing comments he makes that gets the general public generally up in arms all the time. So yes, um, Kanye West, if you're watching this, if you truly do like retro gaming, like you claim, then be my friend. Yeah, cheerio.